Oh, hi, everyone. It is January 30. January 30 already. Doesn't it feel like it was just New Year's yesterday? We're heading into February already, 2019. Well, I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this information, Drag Queen Story Hour, to be held at South Carolina Library. Now, there are an awful lot of people who think that it's only California, that it's only California. It's only California. And unfortunately, there are a lot of hateful people who think if we just get rid of California, everything will be fine. It's not just California. It is going on all over our country. Deliberate agendas to radically change everything about our country, our morals, our culture, tradition, values. But when you don't live any of that, it's so easy to change everything via social engineering. When you are rather empty as a people, no real substance, it's so easy to change everything. That's why the individual doing their work, their personal work, to develop their own self, to mature, to grow, to, um, to begin to live the principles that they speak, because as you live them, they get stronger and stronger within you. If you don't live them, and you live a pretense of having them, you don't have them. So they can be easily taken away. And that's where we are finding ourselves today. Drag Queen Story Hour, really, in South Carolina. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm so glad you all came. This is my very first story time, so Yay! as I'm sure you know, it's a battle to get here, so <laughs> bear with me. Jacob felt his dress surrounding him like armor, soft, cottony, magic armor. Just want to point out that this is a person who was chosen to do the story hour, read a story to children. Do you listen? Can you hear how poorly read is this story by this drag queen? So is it really to just bring in a drag queen to read a story? No, it's to bring in a drag queen. Now, understand this. I don't have any problem with transgender people or any people. Just, I think people should just be able to live their life as long as how they live it does not harm anybody else. This is harm because this is a deliberate agenda to socially engineer the American people, specifically the young, to accept anything and everything and it's being forced upon them. Forced upon them. Um, oh my God. And look, I have had transgender, uh, subscribers leave comments, uh, gay subscribers leave comments. They are very upset because they can see that this is a deliberate agenda and it's backfiring on them because this kind of agenda promotes an awful lot of animosity because there's an awful lot of people who do not want to see this being promoted to children who are so young. Oh man, it just infuriates me that this is going on and that the parents are, hey, let's just all gather our four-year-olds to listen to this person read a story to them this it, it, think about when you were a child would this not scare you i made this dress i'm proud of it and i'm going to wear it <laughs> jacob sprinted across the playground his dress spreading out like wings people of all different colors people who walk and talk differently people who look different like me 
The earth is big enough for all kinds of people. I wanted to do drag queen story time. See, this would scare me. I, I, in imagining myself as a child, it would really scare me. Like, you know, you don't see women wear their bras outside a sweater. So it would confuse me. I can't believe that people can't see the deliberateness of this agenda. I'm in the Carolinas. It was met with a lot of adversity. I didn't think it was going to happen. And then the common market reached out to me and offered their space to do Drag Queen Story Time. I'm so excited that it was such a beautiful event. It went so well. I thought I was going to cry, to be honest with you. I, I was so happy and amazed at the turnout and everybody's smiling faces and how sweet all the kids were. And I just, I'm, I can't be more happy. I can't wait to do more of these. I'm, this is everything that I hope for and more. Uh, I did this because um, I feel like nowadays bullying has become such a, a really big issue in schools. Kids are the easiest way to kind of stop that from an early age, teaching them acceptance and diversity. So hopefully in the future bullying won't be an issue and youth suicide won't be an issue and we can all just be happy and people and normal and don't even have to use labels anymore. That would be a beautiful future. Oh man, well, Drag Queen Story Hour coming to South Carolina Library in February. Uh, this is at the uh, Five Forks branch of the Greenville County Library. It'll be held on February 17. It will feature fabulous queens, inspiring books, fellowship with your amazing friends and neighbors per the Facebook event description. There will be four lovely ladies sharing entertaining stories with you and your children. You do not subject children to this. They are too young. They don't understand what's happening. This is only going to uh, confuse them and socially engineer them. And then you have the parents who are before the age of 10. You know, children do go through phases. Um, but having this put in their face all the time, that phase where they want to be a boy because they see some boys getting um, treated in a way that they want to be treated, and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a, a um, oh, boys are better than girls, they might just see it every now and then, and they want that treatment. So they want to be a boy. And then the parents go, oh, oh, you're transgender then. Uh, you know, it's like utterly insane. Just let your kids develop naturally how they were uh, designed to develop authentically. And, you know, it's almost like, you know, I've seen this throughout my entire adult life, seeing parents who force their way upon their children, just completely squeezing out their own child's authenticity. And it's so disturbing because you know that that child is being set on a trajectory to become an adult with so many issues. Uh, that they don't even know who they are because they've lost their authentic self in childhood. Their parents have snuffed it out. Here, I think people think we are going to be bringing our Saturday night life into the library and we are going to put on like a fabulous drag show, but that's definitely a misconception. No one is there to push an agenda? Are you kidding me? This is absolutely an agenda. And the objective is for Americans to just accept everything, everything, and to demoralize, you know, to, to really cement this moral relativism.
You get to decide. You get to decide your own morality as if as if we don't have standards bringing your children and allowing your children to go to school where they are subject forced to be in an environment forced to learn about transgenderism public schools are even asking children as young as five you know what gender do you want to be if you can't see how deliberate that is, then you are um, sadly blind. It is absolutely an agenda. So I will link below. You know, I, I see uh, so many agendas taking place in our country, in South Carolina, every single time. I go to a store, I read the headlines in the newspapers, the local newspapers, and I see Agenda 2030, wow, staring right back at me almost every single day. So here, you come across these articles, South Carolina teachers frustrated by push to fix K through 12 schools without their ideas. Your ideas mean nothing to anybody. You have become worthless. That unfortunately, uh, is the byproduct of a system that has become centralized. The federal government has centralized its power. You know, there, there was this, um, how did I get to this, was a Facebook page, Stop Common Core in South Carolina. Common Core was brought into states via the federal government saying, you want funding, you accept these standards. You don't accept these standards, you don't get funding. And that is an awful lot of power that the federal government wields. And it can wield it because money speaks. So the only way out of Common Core is for your state to develop or reestablish its own sovereignty as it was uh, originally founded. The states have their own sovereignty over the federal government. The federal government was supposed to be of limited power. The states have more power and somehow uh, get your state to develop its own economy, um, its own power, its own finances, and bring back the power to the local communities. Will that be hard? Absolutely, it will be hard. But you will never get a voice unless you do that. See, the voice is the voice of the federal government, but the voice of the federal government is the United Nations. All of it, when I read Consolidate Rural School Districts, that's what it wants to do. It wants to consolidate rural school districts. Why? For more power in the hands of a very few. That's what consolidation does. So you consolidate more of these rural schools and the districts will then lose more independent say and you will be giving over your power to a very few. And unfortunately, the very few, well, it is coming from the United Nations. So here, Opportunity Zones. Senator Tim Scott. Now, I don't know if this guy knows what really is being, what really is behind all of what is taking place. The United Nations takeover of the world, the new world order. So Tim Scott explains, what is an opportunity zone? What do you think an opportunity zone is? 
Well, it was brought about uh, via Trump's, uh, what was the actual um, name of the act? It was a federal tax incentive. And let me see. Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. Okay. You put in your state and then put in Opportunity Zone, and you will see that your state has Opportunity Zones in which they will be redesigning those zones via the Agenda 2030 Sustainability goals. Yes, Trump is, and I have posted many videos showing you that he appointed heads of our federal agencies that are on board with Agenda 2030 and their agencies are implementing Agenda 2030 throughout our country as well as federal agencies implementing these opportunity funds for long-term private investment in low-income communities. It provides a federal tax incentive for taxpayers who reinvest unrealized capital gains into opportunity funds, which are specialized vehicles dedicated to investing in low-income areas called opportunity zones. South Carolina. Yes. Funding new infrastructure to support population and economic growth. Population growth? We have more Americans dying than are being born. So where's the population growth coming from? Anderson, South Carolina, right where I am. Opportunity zone in the blue. Now, we can't stop any of these agendas. Uh, they have so many organizations, nonprofits, um, they have uh, architects, they've got engineers, they've got co green companies up the wazoo. They're all working on the United Nations Agenda 2030 restructuring of the United States. And because we can't get through to anybody, because, well, adult conversation is pretty much obsolete, that's it. This is what's going to be happening. But here, smart growth, sustainable city network, locus ranks U.S. opportunity zones on smart growth potential. So as they are um, restructuring these zones, redesigning these zones, you've got these organizations that are ranking their success. And those that is also part of the United Nations because the United Nations keeps very, very close tabs on what is happening in each community throughout the world. How are we doing on Agenda 2030? Are we going to be able to get there by 2030? And at the rate things are going, oh boy. Well, when you have people like Ocasio-Cortez in our Congress now, uh, just another nutcase, uh, Pelosi, Maxine Waters, um, you combine the two and you get more nut for your money in Ocasio-Cortez, who is pushing the United Nations Agenda 2030. It's scary to see the rapidity with which all of this is happening. You know, the Treasury Department is on it. The IRS is on it. The Housing Department is on it. Education. Department of Education is on it. And if you don't want to just you know, accept what I'm saying, go to my playlist on Trump and you will see how Trump has absolutely been put in place to continue 
the United Nations takeover of the United States. So look, none of this is going to stop. Things are going to get more, wow, um, insane. And you're going to be forced into accepting anything and everything. But here, um, these opportunity zones, the opportunity funds that Trump has made available, Global Sustainable Investing Alliance. $23 trillion in assets around the world have been committed to socially responsible investing strategies. Wow! So, you sure can come up with the money if you've got a deliberate agenda, huh? You can't seem to help those who are homeless. You can't seem to help those who can't afford to pay their bills anymore. You can't seem to help those who are homeless, those who have lost their homes due to directed energy weapons being used to take out and bring to dust homes in California. You can't seem to help the flooding victims. You keep saying that we have no more funds and FEMA is going broke, but you can come up with an awful lot of money to continue the United Nations plans to take over our country, all countries in the world to develop their new world order for the very deranged few, the sick psychopathic elitist nut jobs. I will link below to everything. It's very sad to see how everything just continues to go on. But to see this in, in South Carolina, okay. <laughs> Yeah, things are really uh, shaping up for utter, utter uh, insanity. Nothing is making any sense. But at least if you get a drag queen into your libraries and you, you know, parents, you want to see this. Oh, you're so happy and so happy to subject your children to this. Um, why don't you get someone who can actually read the story in a way that doesn't sound so unbelievably drab and dull? Ciao, guys.